fellas today we're going to talk about good news you know if you want to talk about good news you're probably going to talk about Burkina Faso and Zimbabwe no, no I'm just kidding about Zimbabwe <laughs> yeah yeah so we are in Burkina Faso today great news amazing things these people are doing amazing things Burkina Faso is doing tremendous things they are winning in robotics my brother Imagine a country at war winning in robotics right now. What's happening, everybody? I hope you're doing good. Beautiful day. Thank you very much for stopping by. You appreciate it. This is home, fellas. You want to know about the motherland? You're at the right place. Let's get to it. Okay, Burkina Faso. This land right here on the map. Beautiful place, lovely people. The best country I have visited in Africa. I'm sorry. Nicest people ever. Okay, respect seriousness transparency welcoming like i felt like i had found my family i'm telling you these people are just amazing okay yeah if you're from far away and you're looking for warmth in africa you probably want to go to burkina faso you're gonna have an amazing time men are very friendly ladies are very respectful food is great there's something they call pule ala it's chicken with garlic my brother you have never tasted anything like that anyway burkina faso has placed second in the pan-african robotic competition Congratulations. Yeah, Piga Makofi, brother. Piga Makofi. Congratulations to our brothers from Burkina Faso doing a tremendous work. Now, this was a competition held in Senegal at major events. So, the Burkina Faso team called the Hacker Stallion reached the podium. Number two. Congratulations again. Why congratulations? Congratulations because the country is at war, my brother. The country is at war and they're not crying, you know, crying like little baby girls, like some other countries cry. Yeah, we at war, you can't do anything. No, they are at war. They're still building. You know, difficulties and pains and miseries will never finish. They will never end until you die. You, you know that, eh? For, for those of you sitting right there waiting for the right time to do good things, you're going to wait for a long time. I'm telling you. Oh, the, the economy is not good. My brother, the economy ain't never going to be good. Whatever you're trying to achieve in life, will never be. you will never have the perfect time. The perfect circumstances will never come. You, you just need to wrestle with whatever you have right now and move forward. That's what it is. And this is what Burkina Faso is doing. Ibrahim Tauri, this man right here, young man, 37 years old, doing an amazing thing. I mean, you look at average 37 year old african man he's probably someone in tiktok insulting people you will never meet in his life because they have a different opinion on some stupid subject but this man is busy building his country and amongst those things that he's doing while building the country he's sending those kids to learn new technology and develop robotics in africa this is not a country that's sponsored by the west you know this is not a very developed country that get all these tools and stuff these are kids that are working with themselves and the government is pushing them forward now to compete. Congratulations. It was a really great experience for us. We had the chance to discover the field of robotics and to interact with people from different countries. And next year, we hope to take first place and to expand our idea on a national level because we saw that other countries like Mali had much more experience and we want to recruit more teams in several leagues. And next year, as I said before, we want to raise the flag of Burkina Faso even higher. Now, we cannot move without understanding what's happening. You, you know, Africans are champions of crying, okay? Champions of complaining. Yeah, we've suffered. All, all Africans have a sad story. Let me tell you something. Every African you will meet has a sad story to narrate oh you know i grew up in poverty yes my mother didn't have anything we used to sleep on blankets everybody has a some even lie they just lie you listen every african especially when they speak to white people they'll tell lies big big yes some of them were that way but it wasn't especially negative because most of the people around you were that way either way right so oh we didn't have electricity well your neighbors didn't have electricity either oh well we, we ate one time a week well, your neighbors ate one, maybe not one time a week, but one, once a day. Africans have stories. You must, <laughs> you must be very careful when they tell you stories. Oh, I'm not coming because my auntie broke her ankle. Oh, I'm sorry, my cousin went to the forest. Then there was a thunder and we don't know what's happened. Oh, I'm sorry, the stomach of my sister's husband. It, it, they always have crazy, stupid stories to narrate. Okay? And, uh, and somebody to blame on their things. I'm just telling you the truth, you know. You know, have you never told your boss that your, your mom's ankle or, or, or knee was broken whilst he wasn't? That's what, we know you for that. So what I'm saying is this one. Everybody has suffered. 
The Chinese, you see the Chinese? Chinese people after World War II were poor, very poor. But how did they transform the country, my brother? They did amazing things in China. The first thing China did, China is a powerful country today. Even America cannot bully China anymore. But the first thing China did was they opened the door. It was called the Reform Opening Up in 1978 by Deng Xiaoping. He was the finance minister of the Chinese government at the time. Okay, 1978. What did they do first? First thing was, okay, we need to stop being Chinese Chinese because China back in time was, okay, very communist, okay? Nothing opening up. They were a bit like North Korea, okay? But then... At 1978, they decided, let's open the economy. Let's open the country. Let's allow people to get in. Let's allow our people to get out. Number one, China began actively studying and adapting successful models such as Japan, US, Germany, and Singapore. So China started looking into US. How are they doing things? How is Germany doing things? How are things happening in Japan? How about Singapore? So they opened up. They understood first that we are not self-sufficient. We need other people's expertise for us to move forward. You know, somebody used to say, if if I'm broken, don't try to fix it. Or if you want to do good in business, just look at the guy that is doing the very same business that you're doing and he's doing great. Just copy whatever he's doing. Don't don't be ashamed. Copy what he's doing that's working and just add a little bit of your signature to it. That's what China did. They copied America, copied Germany, copied Japan, copied Singapore. Number two, they sent millions of students all across the world. China sent millions of students to research abroad, especially to Western universities, to learn science, technology, management, and governance. Science, technology, management, and governance. They were just not learning from other countries. They also sent their kids to go study in other countries to learn. Number three, they carefully localized foreign knowledge to fit China's unique condition. I mean, adapting to capitalism because China wasn't necessarily a capitalist country was a socialist country they needed to see things they could apply in their own country from elsewhere number four china welcome foreign companies brother they opened the door they said we are a big country we have a lot of people but we cannot do everything by ourselves they opened the door because back in time like i said china was like north korea nobody comes in nobody goes out but then they opened the market. They allowed foreign companies to come invest into the Chinese environment. That was between 1980 and 1990. They set up joint ventures, meaning Chinese companies with foreign companies working together on the same goals, giving opportunity firm access to the land. China then learned a culture of continuous learning. I mean, Chinese people learn every single day. They don't stop. They're very different from you and I, okay? I know a lot of people in this society, you go to university, you get a diploma, whatever you call it. Then you're done. You think you're lectured. You, that's it. You know everything. You can comment on everything in the world. You, you, without research, you want to correct people, telling them you're so gullible. You so you, you don't read. Last time you read is long time ago. Like long, long, you read about the business you were about to join. You, you learned about the company before you joined. That's all you learned. You've never learned anymore. Chinese people continuously learn. They acquire knowledge. Matter of fact, is China produced the most STEM in the world? Yeah, people with science technology, engineers, and mathematics degree. The most in all countries combined is China. Look at China today. They're massive power. Even America can't crush them anymore because a lot of engineers in America are Chinese. Well, even the mathematician team of South Africa, look at this team. The mathematics team, they're Chinese with a bunch of white boys. And you shouldn't feel some type of way about this. This should be encouraging you to send your kid to school and instill in them the mentality of learning and getting better and better and better. This is not an insult. This is an eye-opener to a lot of African countries. You know, Africa can do great if we invest in our people. This is what Ibrahim Traore is doing right now. These kids that used to be mouthless, now they can speak. They are number two. This is just the beginning for a country that is at war. Pigama coffee. Let me know how you feel about this. It's always a great pleasure. God bless.